I'm Wally Clark. My name is Amerigo Gazaway. And we are Gummy Soul. You're watching the nodfactor.com. Peace. Gummy Soul is a record label that we started. Uh, we began as a radio show, and we used to spin 70s soul music, funk records, and kind of morphed itself into a boutique record label that uh, we co own and operate today. I've been producing off and on for the past 10 or 15 years. I built my first computer when I was 13. Got a copy of Acid Pro, started messing around with turntables, samplers. That is Gary Gazaway. Uh, he's a jazz trumpet player, but uh, you know he does a lot of fusion with different genres and experiments with different styles. And so I've always been, I've always been exposed to different genres of music through through him. I came more from the radio background, where in actually in high school, in, at the local college, which is Vanderbilt University, uh, there was a show called. E, uh, 911 emergency show with Egon and Count Bass D. Egon f went to, uh, left there and actually went to run Stone's Throw Records. And he influenced me to get into radio when I was in college. I had a hip hop show there and then when I got out, went to Atlanta, sold mixtapes and stuff for about a year and then came back to Nashville and got a radio show on the same station as Egon and Count Bass D, and that's when we started doing the Gummy Soul. I came up with the name, um, it's kind of a Wu-Tang tribute. It's, uh, my name's Wally Clark, it's the Wallabies, and they've got gum souls. And, uh, I was a huge Wu head growing up, and I wanted, like, like he said, we spun funk and soul, and so I was looking for a name that kind of had the soul influence in it and that kind of fit where it's still got a little bit of hip-hop flavor with it. He actually taught me how to make beats and so now I'm a producer as well. The Gummy Soul album with Kurt and myself was the first official release on Gummy Soul Records and that came out in December of 2010. Fela Soul came out the, the following year. Fela Kuti has just always been one of my favorite artists. I, like I said, my dad's a drum, uh, jazz trumpet player, and so I've always been uh, drawn to his music because of that. You know, lots of horns, lots of brass, and uh, funky rhythms. And so, you know, I've always been a fan of Fela Kuti and uh, and De La Soul as well. Um, and so it just seemed like a seemed like a perfect fit. I was born in the boogie down cat scan With my builder fell down on the rat scan People sold the super on the trip to the pee now While I settle off the shores of the long out Finding the sample sources, finding the resources is definitely the most time consuming part of it. You know, finding the acapellas, finding the samples. Once, once you have access to those, you know, the music just kind of takes on a life of its own, you know, with, People like us, we've been doing it for so long and we, we know what we want it to sound like. And so, you know, once we get our hands on those resources, um, you know, it, it just kind of happens, it happens on its own. <laughs> it's pretty limited to also just what acapellas are available. And so we just had to, there were certain day law songs that we wanted to do and we couldn't find. Same with The Far Side. You know, like we probably would have liked to have done uh, drop. Drop. You know, but it's, the acapella doesn't exist. And really the catalyst for Bizarre Tribe was the fact that they came out with the box set of 45s that had acapellas that were never available. We're using Ableton Live uh, for a lot of the arrangement and then uh, Reason for a lot of the sequencing, like drum patterns and bass lines synths, MIDI stuff, but uh, Ableton Live has been a big part of what I do just because it allows you to uh, allows you to stretch things without changing the pitch, which is a big deal for producers like us, you know, being able to change the sound of something, or change the tempo of something without changing the tone or the sound mm -hmm. of it, you know, so it doesn't sound like a chipmunk or a, you know, really well, low. just making sure that we can make everything perfectly on time, because as soon as it gets off beat, <clears throat> It just loses all of its flair, you know. And you know, in Ableton, if you got the audio, you can you can warp it. You know what I mean? So anything that's off beat, 
I can now fix it and get it on beat. De La has embraced the Fela La Soul project, um, and Farside especially has come out in, in huge support of the, the uh, Bizarre Tribe project. You know, they've, they've been performing a lot of the songs live on their tours in Europe. As far as the, the fair use issues, we've been contacted with some of the big boys. We've expressed to them that what we are doing files under fair use, that it kind of transcends just kind of a grab, snatch and grab. It's a good way of showing our production and using things that people already know, but in new and creative ways. We've been in touch with uh, another very popular group from the 90s, particularly 1993. And so we're gonna be uh, working with them um, exclusively. They've given, given us access to their, their vocal tracks and we're gonna be working exclusively to create a project in collaboration with them to drop September 13th this year. One year on the year anniversary of the Zara Tribe and Fela Soul. Other artists from the past see the potential for us to work with their old material and refresh in it and kind of update it for today. Um, so we're really excited about that. It's gonna be awesome.